Okay, I can't let this drop. I found out more connections. Oh, man. What a day this is. I wonder if this is an important day in history. It's certainly an important day in my history. Okay, this is the Ephesians 1 Repar Stock. I'm using the PDF version because it's easier on the camera, the screen recorder. Link will be in the video description. It's really already in the video description to part two. What I want to focus on here is at the bottom and about the middle Bible time distances. That's really where you want to look. Um, it, that same link will have the same name in the HTM version and in the doc. It's the same page as you see in the PDF version here. Okay, if you would focus your attention down here at the bottom millennium 4200 years from Adam that was the schedule that was supposed to work it is known today to the Jews as 2100 years to the Goyim meaning the Gentiles that was supposed to be Adam to Abram 2100 years from Abram to Christ they call it 2000 years in Judaism today but it's really 2100 all this math in front of you is proving that and it's going to be even more proven as we get to um, go through some of these numbers. These are all Bible numbers. These are not based on estimates of scholars. I drew all the material you're seeing right there from the Bible only, using solar years only. Bible never uses lunar years. I don't know why the Jews came up with lunar years. That was never the rule from Exodus 12 forward. And a lot of Jews actually know that it's only solar years. Okay, but of course they're the minority. Majority is always wrong. You just have to live with that. It hurts, but that's the way it goes. 4200 from Adam, you can do the, the begats yourself. And there will be a link in the video description showing you the Bible verses, how you get past Genesis 5 to navigate the rest of the dates. But they're all the dates are in the Bible. A lot of scholar mistakes, and that's part of the problem. Okay, down here. At the very bottom middle of the screen, temple dedicated. The millennium was supposed to begin in the 1044th year of the temple. All right, that's what we're focusing on here. Now look just to the left of it. David's death, which the scholars get wrong because they think he died at age 70 following Josephus instead of the Bible. That would have been the 1057th year of David's death. Okay? Now, that being the case, seven years prior to it was 1050. Seven years prior to the millennium was what? The beginning of the latest date of the tribulation. Okay, that was the latest schedule for the tribulation. Even the church was expecting it to happen 4193 from Adam at the outside. Christ, therefore, relative to David's death, Okay, see, this is Christ's death in his actual year versus when he was scheduled to die. He was scheduled to die here. Okay, he was scheduled, therefore, to die in the thousandth anniversary of David's death. Fifty years were then going to follow. That's depicted by Jubilee and Pentecost in the Mosaic Law. The final seven years were the tribulation that was also pre-church. That's the point. It's pre-church schedule. The trib, therefore, would have begun in the 1050th year following David's death. That's a math relationship I did not notice until putting up part three today. So maxima mea culpa on that. Notice, however, that if Christ lives to age 105, like Paul is showing, that would have taken you to the 1050th year of the temple's dedication. So he's bracketing the potential years of the tribulation based on these time distances. See, this is a time distance table. It's on page 135 of the doc or of the PDF. And the Bible time distances is right here. In the HTM version, you just click on this Bible time distances at the beginning of the page and you'll come right back to it 
Okay, you'll notice the PDF works now. Yeah, that Smart PDF Creator Pro only costs $100, and uh, that's cheaper than Acrobat, which will do the same thing with more steps. Okay, so f seven years beyond that is the beginning of the 1051st year of, of the temple. See, temple dedicated. I'm sorry, let's see if I can get rid of, where do, don't I hide the toolbars? Yeah, there we go, we got a little more room now. Okay, so f when Christ would have been 105, which is the point Paul's making as a potential rapture, or, you know, end of time, okay? rolling series of deadlines like I introduced in episode G GGS 11. Um, Paul's series of rolling rapture or trib ending millennium dates is the theme of Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. He's showing why the rapture won't occur. It could occur at any time, but he didn't expect it to occur because he's telling you basically that by Constantine's time, which is where I left off in the GGS videos, church would be so apostate, it would only be the pro el picotas, which is Ephesians 1, 12. Pro el picotas means first fruits, means the small handful of sheep that you wave before God on the first day of the Omer, which is piggybacked on the last day of Passover, per the Bible, Numbers 28, 26. Okay, I've covered that before in my Sar Shalomin videos. Um, so our point here is that he's showing the poeticness of the timing if God chose to do it that way. There's no guarantee he would. But he is showing a poeticness to the timing and he's also showing what would happen in history that year so that you could appreciate the nature of the rapture doctrine. It's all about the rapture doctrine and how churches change because that's the theme of Ephesians. Okay, so this would have been, Christ would have been, was 98 here, would have just been turning 97, would have entered his 98th year at the beginning of the millennium, 4,200 years from Adam's fall. Not Adam's age, Adam's fall. Okay, so that would have been the 1050th year of the temple if he went seven more years. Literally the beginning of the 1051st year. Seven years prior to the millennium is when the trib was last expected. That would have been the 1050th year from David's death at age 77. Luke uses 77, therefore, in Luke 1. Matthew picks up on that, which is a meter in Isaiah 53 of 77 syllables. Luke chooses that. To piggyback on to Matthew, who chose the 42, which was the first two verses of Isaiah 53, which is Isaiah 52, 13 and 14 in our modern English, but the Hebrew starts the chapter actually at Isaiah 52, 13. So David, the, the, the meter in Isaiah 53 is 1078, and that's going to be real crucial here. And he's counting from the birth of first David to the death of last David as scheduled prior to the tribulation. Okay. So, um, that fact, wait a minute, I hit the wrong keyboard. That fact is what Paul is tracing here. All right. So that's when the trib was supposed to begin. I hope you see that there's an orchestration to these numbers. You've got a 1057 here, which is obviously the 1050 begins seven years prior. you got a 1050 coming seven years after this. All right? you got a 1050, David being born 1050 years after Abraham supermatured and got his covenant of Isaac's birth. Okay? The, the covenants are illustrated by births. Okay, that goes all the way back to Adam as a rule. Here's a 1,000. Christ is born 1,000 years after David is king of Jerusalem. Um, yeah, king, king over all Jerusalem. He's born there 4,007 years after David is king of Hebron. All right, so the tribulation, therefore, well, that's the jubilee and the tribulation. That's the 57 years prior to the millennium would have been in the tent would have begun the 57 year countdown would have begun when David David 
had been king of Jerusalem for 1040 years. All right? And the millennium would have been begun at Christ's age 97, which would be the 1097th year of David's being king of Jerusalem. All right? So in the 1090th year, when Christ would have been 90 years old, that was when the tribulation was expected. That would have been his 91st year. That's why Paul is using 91 four times in his meter. Okay, it's depicting four quarters. That also ties to Noah in the ark. Okay, you're beginning to see that there's a definite, definite tie in these years. Okay, I just didn't notice that it was tying back to um, not only Abram, but it's tying back to Jacob and to Noah, his birth. And that was what I showed in part three. Here in part four, what I'm trying to just stress is that you got a 1050 that I didn't see before also, measured from David's death to the tribulation. Another 1050 from the year the temple is dedicated, 13 years. 13 years after David died, the temple was dedicated. That's 1 Kings 9. Okay? And seven years after the millennium should have begun, the temple would have reached its 1050th year. Okay? Now, I hope you understand this. He's seeing that that's another seven years. You're going beyond the schedule of time because there's a seven-year lateness here with the temple. That because David dies at age 77, not age 70, and that because he becomes um, king of Hebron at 30, but there's a seven-year civil war, so then he becomes king seven years later. So he's actually king for 40 years here by the time he dies over all Israel. Okay, Christ was supposed to be born and die king over all Israel also for 40 years, and the Jews still recognize that today. That's in the Talmud Sanhedrin 97 through 99, um, 97a through 99b if I recall. Okay, so just look at this basic for now. Look at this page 135 in the doc and note the connections and we're going to come back in the next increment.